Hey guys, and welcome back to the JTO channel. And the Champions League is back, people. The Champions League is back. Obviously, last week uh, was very underwhelming. Um, you know, uh, Real Madrid were very negative against PSG. You understand the game against Inter and Liverpool was very, very bad in many ways. You know, the Europa League was even more entertaining than the Champions League. You know, everyone was excited that the Champions League is back. Do you know what I'm saying? But we're hoping... That this week's games, you know, including the preview I'm doing here for Chelsea versus Lille, hopefully the Atletico Madrid Man United game will be entertaining as well. Villarreal Juventus, I think they play on the same day too. So, yeah, hopefully this week's Champions League games is a lot better than last week. Obviously, the away goal rule did get taken out um, officially. Um, apparently, I heard Tom Stuckel's press conference today. He talked about how the coaches, pretty much most of them decided, the majority of them decided they didn't want the away goal away goal rule anymore and people seem to think that it's um it's actually brought on a negative effect on the games you know obviously we all saw how negative Real Madrid were against PSG and people thought that was down to the away goal rule but like Tuchel said in his press conference like in my opinion like I do think if anything it should make teams attack even more because it makes you less worried about um conceding in my opinion especially if you're the home team because, like, yeah, tomorrow, if we beat Lil 3-1, well, it's not really going to matter, is it? Because if it was away goals, then Lil would just have to score two at, you know, um, their ground. And it, and they'd go through on away goals. But if we beat them 3-1 tomorrow, those to score two goals, you know, at Lil, which I wouldn't expect because they haven't been great this season, you know, compared to last season, then... It'd go to extra time. So I do think, if anything, it should make teams attack more, you know, and uh, be more fluid and uh, make the games more entertaining. So I think I'd give it a bit more time to see how it goes. Obviously, it hasn't been off to a great start. But let's be honest, like, even if Real Madrid had attacked, I mean, and lost, I mean, they'd have to attack regardless at the Bernabeu. So, so it is what it is in terms of that. But this is not about them. This is about the preview to Chelsea versus Lille. I just wanted to talk about the away goal rule real quick because people think it has a negative effect, which so far it has, but I'd say just give it time. But yeah, this is the Chelsea versus Lille preview. We're going to talk on Lille. Obviously, Thomas Tuchel did do his press conference. Go check it out. I'll give you a predicted lineup as well. And I will also give you guys a score prediction at the end of it as well and what to expect from this game. So, yeah, if you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe, turn on the post notifications, follow my social media about down below. And, yeah, let's do this. Obviously, starting off with Lille. They're right now 12th um, in Liga. They've conceded about 35 goals this season. They've lost a couple key players. Obviously, they lost their manager, Tanis, who in which Tanis are actually killing it right now. I think they're third in Liga right now. So, yeah, the manager that won... Lil the league last season obviously did leave and decided to go to Nice and obviously they're doing really well right now and um, they lost one of their key players um, one of their starting players Ikone Ikone was a key player for them um, he left uh, in the in, in the winter period obviously in January he uh, he went to Florentina to Serie A and they lost their best goalkeeper um, you know to AC Milan as well so yeah they've lost some key players but there's still some players there that we should look out for um, I would say a player like Renato Sanchez, but unfortunately he is out for the game, I heard. He is injured, so he won't be available for the game. So in terms of the midfield, we should be good tomorrow. We should control it nicely and, uh, you know, move swiftly on in terms of that. But in terms of the dangerous players they have, they've still got Jonathan David. If I'm not wrong, um, he scored 17 goals this season, which is already better than um, his the amount he scored last season. I know in the league he's got 12, um, but in all competitions, he's already like surpassed the amount of goals he scored last season for them so yeah that's really positive he's having a good season obviously they've got Yilmaz as well he's a threat as well the Turkish center forward you know he has his moments you know he's not always consistent but you know what he can always be a nuisance to deal with if you know what I mean so yeah there's him they've got the likes of Jose Font at the back if you remember him from the Premier League days you know he used to be a quality center back obviously he's still around he's like I think I'm pretty sure he's like 37 years old or something like that and still playing so yeah fair play to him but Overall, they've got young talents like um, Angel Gomez, obviously the former Manchester United Academy product. So, yeah, they've still got some players that can pose a threat. But this season, defensively, you know, it just hasn't worked out for them. Uh, the manager is just not as good. Like, I checked him out the other day. Like, the last uh, team he managed was um, a team in, in, league, in, in the second division of French football. So, like... He's not as good as their previous manager and it's no surprise. So it's clear that they've dropped off this season. But let's not act like tomorrow's game isn't going to be a difficult one, you know. It's not like we ourselves have been good in recent games as well. I'd say, 
you know, over the past couple of months, we haven't been good overall. But I'd say mainly since the uh, Spurs game after the two week break we had. I feel like since we came back, the FA Cup game against Plymouth since then, it feels like we've struggled a bit um, to put in good cohesive team performances and score goals as well. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we can fix that up by starting with tomorrow. Like I said, Thomas Tuchel did do his press conference and Mendy did as well. Go check those out. I'm not going to speak too much on them. But, yeah, Tuchel obviously talks about Lukaku, you know, saying, what can I do? Like, what what can I do with him, you know? Um, and he also said at the same time that he could be the solution to the problem. Um, and, look, at the end of the day, we'll get to the predicted lineup and you'll see who I want. Um, picked for the, the, the for the game but you know with this attacking situation real quick like I'm tired like I'm, I'm seriously tired of debating it with people like I'm seeing loads of different opinions on Twitter and I'm just like you know people blaming the manager and then the players and then you know I think it's just all of them I think it's all of them I think some of our attackers are just shit and I think Tuku needs to do more to get the best out of them like first of all putting them in their best positions you know um, I just feel like there's some players in our team that we've I don't think we've ever seen the best out of, ever. Like Kai Havertz, I don't think we've ever seen the best out of him on a consistent basis. Yes, he's had moments, but I don't think we've ever seen the best out of him. Ziyech is now starting to get into gear now, and we're, I feel like we're getting the best out of him now, you know, because Tuchel's decided to change the formation, put him in the right system, in the right position, and he's cooking. Lukaku, we haven't gotten the best out of him at all, really. Um, Pulisic, you know... If he can play consistently down the left-hand side, let's see what he can do. Because I feel like this season he hasn't been given the opportunity to do that. Obviously, over the weekend he plays a 10. And I thought first half he did all right, second half really bad. So, yeah, look, our attackers, yeah. Like, I'd make some changes for tomorrow. Maybe just subtle, but... Um, yeah, let's just get into the lineup prediction straight away. Let's not waste any more time. I would actually play a 4-4-2. Um, I was debating playing a 3-4-3, but I was thinking it wouldn't make sense for certain players to play in this in that system tomorrow. And plus, we don't have wing-backs to do, to do that anyway. Um, to be fair, in team news, Mason Mount was in training today. Um, obviously, Aspi Lequeur was in team training today as well. So they're fit. Um, they look like they are available for selection tomorrow. I don't think Mason will play, though. I think he'll be on the bench and maybe feature in the Carabao Cup final and start in that game. He might feature tomorrow, don't get twisted. I think Aspi could uh, start tomorrow because he is available and free. Only pair that's not available right now is Callum hudson uh, Obviously, we all know Reese James and Bencho are out for the game tomorrow. So, yeah, let's get into the predicted lineup. Obviously, in goal, Edouard Mendy, simple as that. Move on now to the back four. Um, I would go with Aspilicueta as the right back. Um, just needs to come back into this team. Christensen done a job um, at right back against uh, Palace, in my opinion. I thought at times he struggled, but I thought over he did well, in my opinion. Um, at left back, <sighs> Alonso. I'm going to go with Alonso just because I think, you know, I think Lille will not come out and attack tomorrow. I do feel like they're going to be very defensive. And I think I just need players on the ball who are just going to be good. And um, the two centre-backs can be Rudig and Thiago Silva. I think those two will cover for, um, you know, for the full-backs as well whenever they get exposed. But, yeah, like, Malang saw, you know, and the weekend wasn't the best, was he? So, yeah. Um, I'd play Alonso tomorrow. As much as he's defensively a liability, at least going forward, he can offer us something. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, hopefully he can just bring us something tomorrow. In the double pivot, this was a bit harder to debate, mainly because of two players, but Kovacic has to come back into the team. You saw his impact straight away when he came on against Crystal Palace, and it's clear that he has been our best midfielder this season. And in general, he's just been one of our best players anyway. I'd say top three best players this season alongside, you'd probably say, uh, Thiago Silva and, yeah, probably Rudiger or something like that because I think our centre-backs have been good this season. I wouldn't say any attackers up there or any midfield or, or winger or full-back. So, yeah, uh, it is what it is. But cover for me goes in. Uh, the other the other one, Jorginho Kante, Jorginho Kante. I decided it may as well be Jorginho um, because, look, I didn't like his performance on the weekend. But in this game, I'd like to think that Lil will sit back and not take the game to us like Palace did, hence why he struggled. I don't think Lil will oppose the same game plan Patrick Vieira did. So for that reason, I think Jorginho is fine playing in this game with Kovacic. I think we'll have a lot of the ball, a lot of possession. And in terms of creativity, I think they can bring the best um, creativity in midfield better than Kante, at least 
Um, and I'd save Kante for the final anyway. So, yeah, because we've got to look after him. Obviously, we all know he's injury prone and that. So, yeah, Kante. I mean, Jorginho covers the midfield. On the right, Hakim Ziyech. On the right wing, let him do what he wants. Let him flow. Let him link up. Let him use that wonder of a left foot. Let him just be the wizard that we all hoped that he, he could be. And he's doing that right now. So, yeah, I'd play him there. On the left-hand side, Hudson is not available. So, I'd play uh, Pulisic there. Um, like I said on the weekend, you know, I think he just needs a run of games in that position now. Just give him a run of games. Just give him a run of games in that position. You know, let him have some consistency, some flow. Um, and uh, yeah, let's see what he can do in tomorrow's game. Hopefully he can just make those runs in the box and, you know, maybe score a couple goals. And hopefully get on the end of one of ZX crosses because on the weekend, tactically, he wasn't able to do that. Because obviously Pulisic and Ziyech were playing close to each other as Pulisic was a 10. And then the two up top. Drop Lukaku, man. Won't play Lukaku in this game. Um, look, at the end of the day, I said this before um, in the Palmeiras preview. I said this before in the Palace preview as well. Yes, we've got to ride it out with him. But that performance against Palace, like, it's not like he hasn't been putting those performances. It's just the fact that the seven touches is just unbelievable. And I think that's really pathetic. And I've seen people genuinely defend that. Like, are you actually okay? You're defending that. Honestly, I don't care if we're not playing to your strengths, bro. Put me put me up front in that in that team. They, that team will probably not play to my strengths. But you know what? I'd have more than seven touches. Jesus Christ. If you've ever if anyone's ever played football, if you're a striker and you've ever played football and the team's not playing to your strengths, please do not you would still have more than seven touches. I played striker for my team. And you know what? My team never played to my strengths. I'm more of a I'm an in behind person. You know, I've got pace on me. You understand? But trust me, if I had to drop deep to feel the ball, I would do that. You know what I'm saying? Jesus Christ. So for me, play Vernon Havertz tomorrow. Like I said, same reasons for Havertz with Pulisic. Give him a run of games as well in his position, whether that's um, in, in a two-man strike partnership or if you want to drop him deep and make him the 10. Do that tomorrow. And let Kai Havertz just, you know, have some consistency in games. Because I really do want him to be given this chance to just, you know, play some football and play in this position. Because, like I said, I think we still got to try to get the best out of him. But, yeah, for me, play him tomorrow. And Timo Werner, play Timo tomorrow. Why not? You know, as much as I don't like him against teams that sit back on the low block, I think he's kind of useless. Just give me, at least he moves. At least he flipping moves. He will move. He will press. He will. He will make space for others. He will do something. He will actually do a couple things that Lukaku is just not doing at the moment. So for me, play Timo Werner tomorrow. He'll make space for others. He's a space creator. He'll run in behind. He's got a bit of pace. He'll press from the front as well. Do it. Give him a chance. I don't remember the last time Timo Werner even started a game for Chelsea. I think the last one was against Spurs away when we beat them 1-0 in the League Cup semi-final. Give him a chance tomorrow. And play him, you know. At least he's going to make some runs and use his pace at least, you know. Because we need something up top, okay. If it's not working with Lukaku right now, just get him on the bench. Because we all know he's going to play on the weekend against Liverpool. We all know he's going to play that final. So you know what? Let's just give him a rest for that game. Hopefully he's refreshed. Hopefully he's pumped up. Hopefully he's ready. Even though it looks like he doesn't want to be here. But I'm hoping for that at the best. So, yeah. That would be my team for tomorrow. Tell me your team down below. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for watching this match preview. Um, if you disagree with anything I said, put it down in the comments below and tell me why. What would your lineup be, you know? And a score prediction, by the way, I'm going to go with a 2-1 a Chelsea win. I'll go with a 2-1 Chelsea win uh, for tomorrow's game. And hopefully we just get the job done and uh, we can move on and uh, look forward to the League Cup final this weekend against Liverpool. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow for my uh, player ratings and my match review, respectively. And, yeah, I'll see you lot then when hopefully we have won the game. So, yeah. Bye! <laughs>